Hello everybody, this is Colorful Coding, the place where we turn bits of code in colorful fun experiences. And this is the beginning of what I hope it will become an AR core tutorial series. First of all, we should start with what exactly is the environment of AR right now and why you should choose AR core if you start. You have basically two big uh, alternatives. You have the mobile SDKs like Puforia or Wikitude that offer a wide range of uh, features like image targets, cylinders, model tracking, they have extended tracking, geolocation and so on. They are pretty powerful of course, but aren't they just smoke and mirrors? They use mostly computer vision techniques to track an object, detect it, and then to approximate its position in the real world. Uh, they're pretty powerful, they work on most devices, they usually come with a price, uh, they're not free, but uh, yeah, they do pretty complex stuff and they're really good at it. Being about image recognition, we call them marker-based augmented reality, since it can actually understand the space around it. Simplistically talking, they work like uh, QR codes, but of course it can get more complex than that. However, if you want to actually understand the space around you, you have devices like Multiclip and HoloLens, and pretty soon I hope there's gonna be also HoloLens too. Uh, what they do differently, they are actual headsets, they are standalone, and they have all those depth cameras and they can understand the space around you. They do an actual scan. Once you have the 3D scan of, your, of the room you are in, you can do lots of fun things with it. Once you have the 3D model of the room, you can actually do other stuff like spatial mapping, spatial understanding, see where the floor is, where the tables are, the walls, and so on. You can do occlusion once you have the model and actually hide stuff that are behind real objects. And uh, you have some other things like anchor persistency. So we have these two alternatives. We have the mobile devices SDKs that are usually free to try. And you also have uh, sets like uh, the mixed reality headsets like the HoloLens and Magiclip and there are also some others like Meta or Dacry but yeah those are the most powerful ones right now. Why I choose to start with AR Core is because I see some disadvantages in those two. First of all the SDKs are kind of limited as I said since they don't actually understand the space around you. And then you have the headsets that are great but they're still kind of limited and they're pretty expensive, uh, a few thousand euros each. They are of course the most amazing devices, I still don't think they are consumer ready since they have some defects like field of view is kind of limited you can actually see something like this and the people get shocked first because they thought it's full screen your users have to buy devices and this won't happen very easy they are still to find that killer app that it's actually so useful it's worth it there is ar core and uh, this is an sdk that has kind of the same capabilities as ar kit one is made by google and the other one by apple uh, they can do pretty similar stuff and they grow together. AR Core. AR Core is available for more, most Android and iOS devices. It's also uh, free. You as a developer can use it in native code for Android and iOS. You can also use it in Unity 3D, React Native, and maybe some more. It's also available on web. There's a library called Web AR on AR Core, but it's still developing. It's not that easy to deploy. But what makes AR Core special? AR Core has few yet powerful AR features. First of all, there is the spatial mapping. So using the feature points and tracking them just by the RGB camera and then correlating them with the camera intrinsics and the IMU sensors of your phone, the AR Core can actually detect at first the points in the exact distance of the points from the camera. And then using that, they can pose estimate your camera inside the room you are scanning. Also, once they uh, map the feature points, more feature points you can make one plane, horizontal planes, vertical planes. It doesn't sound like much, but it's actually more than enough for most use cases. IMU sensors. IMU sensors are basically the accelerometer, gyroscope, and uh, I did mention IMU sensors. IMU sensors are basically called the inertial measurement unit. And uh, they usually consist of accelerometer, gyroscope, and sometimes the magnetometer. They are used basically to understand uh, how the device moves without using the camera. And it's like a fallback system. They use also the tracking of the points, but it's more stable. Okay, so now that we have all those points and planes and their exact position in space, uh, we can actually do some stuff with it. Array casting is basically creating an imaginary line from a point with a source. And then we can see if it fits a plane or a point and place it right there. I think we'll see more about this in the next video. Once we hit the location, we can create an anchor there. An anchor is basically a persistent location that is stable in the room. 
you can move around it, rotate around it, and it stays right there. Spatial mapping is already really close of what the Mixed headsets do, but the uh, Air Core also offers a few more uh, features for you to make things more more fun. So, for instance, they have the light estimation. AR Core calculates the average light in the room and gives you a float number that you can use in your shaders to illuminate your object. It has no direction right now and it's not really complex, but it's pretty cool to use. Image targets. In case you miss the old SDK marker based augmented reality, you can actually recognize images. It's pretty cool because it's it's one of the main features of the other SDKs, but this one is free. It offers you a local database of up to a thousand images you can upload, and they say they can recognize up to 20 images in the same time. So this is pretty awesome also. Once your image is found, an object is anchored there. They still do not offer the tracking of a moving image. So if we want something to track and move it, it won't move it with, but once it's stable again, the object will pop up. And then we have uh, one last that's really cool uh, feature is called Cloud Anchors. AR is so much cooler than VR in my opinion since it's a more social technology. You don't cut yourself out from the real reality but instead augmented and with your friends or at the festival or wherever you are you can actually see the same and uh, that's what Cloud Anchors facilitate. You can actually create multiplayer games on multiple mobile devices where the AR objects are in the same place. This is pretty cool but they have some limitations right now. It's pretty black boxed. You can only hold that can on the server for 24 hours. Also, you cannot serialize it, so you cannot use it yourself. All the matching is done by on Google Cloud. My guess is this happens for privacy reasons, since playing around with 3D scans of people's homes and buildings is pretty catchy right now. That's why they actually say it's not really fast. However, this limits us a lot, since we don't have access to the scans and we cannot do the matching ourselves, keep the matching forever and do persistent things. There are pretty cool services that promise to offer this and we may talk about that also. Okay, so that was for today. I think we had a shallow look over the AR core. I think in the next video we're gonna go deeper into it. We're gonna actually look at a little bit of code. We have a basic understanding of AR core. Uh, we understood that it's basically a, a bunch of points that are sometimes transformed in a plane and we don't have any control of the camera. Other than that, it's mostly really similar to programming in any 3D engine since uh, AR even though it's new, it stands on the shoulders of giants such as game industry. So all the programming environments are refined. In the next video, I think we'll go deeper into it. It's look how spatial mapping is implemented. I think I will do it in Android native just because seeing how everything is constructed, seeing the actual code, it's more relevant and you can learn better what AR Core is constructed on. I want to make these videos relevant no matter the environment. It's basically the same thing. And once you understand one, you can use it everywhere. I just think I will start with Android because instead of creating prefabs and game objects in Unity, you actually have to instantiate by hand every class and understand how it works. Until next time, please subscribe. Uh, I've left some interesting links in the description.